Live. All right. We are live. First video for the Thrifting Lounge. Uh, this is Joshua with the Thrifting Lounge. And I am Kevin with the Thrifting Lounge. So what we want to do basically was give you guys um, five items each that we found recently to be on the lookout for. Um, and the idea behind it kind of was to try to find items that were some that are somewhat common um, and then a couple that are really unique as well. Uh, I happened to find two, or really three, really unique items today that I've never seen in my Goodwill. Um, but I've also got two items that I see pretty regularly and sell pretty well. So um, I guess with that, we'll just get started. Uh, the very first thing I have is this on the wall, if you can see. It is a vintage Pendleton uh, herringbone coat. Let me see. Get you up a little bit closer to it. And... Uh, yeah, it looks better. That's gorgeous right there, man. I love that. It's nice the only iron bone cut. Yeah, and I want to show the tag too. It's kind of kind of a different tag than what I've seen before. Um, still think it's legitimate, but I just think it's uh, just an older one. It says uh, Pendleton LTD on it, which is limited. Um, and what I'm going to try to do here is actually do a screen share and show you what I found in terms of research. Um, so I, I paid six dollars for this thing. Um, reason I bought it is because it's a Pendleton. Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, the size, it doesn't have a size on it. Um, the design, it's virgin wool and it's just a really cool herringbone which is pretty popular anyway. So I'm gonna try to show you on uh, eBay. Let's see here. I'm gonna go all right, this is the first time I'm doing this on video, so bear with me. Screen share. Here we go. Start screen share. Okay. Can you see that good, Kevin? I don't see anything yet. There we go. Okay. So this one, I'll go back. Well, I can't go back one step, but the this one is a little bit different in terms of it's got buttons and it's different color. There are none that are just like the one that I bought. Um, this one was actually listed for six ninety five, and the guy took a best offer of one fifty. Uh, there are a few of them that are this similar style for about one thirty five to one fifty. Um, because mine is the herringbone design, and it seems to be a little bit older than these, I'm going to list it for two sixty five for the best offer. Now you said that this is the same label that's on your Pendleton. Yeah, same label. Um, so maybe, it was, maybe it's just on the trench coaches or the, the coats. That's what I'm thinking is that the yeah. label is specific to you know some type of trench coat because there's other uh, sport coats and blazers that still have the kind of more typical um, Pendleton design. But I've seen a few of these tags uh, also on some vintage images on Google search. Um, yeah, if any of you guys out there you know want to chime in or know about this specific label on the Pendletons, um, Please let us know. Send us a, a, a comment on the video or uh, send us a message. Yeah, and I want to, let's see. Okay, I want to share that label one more time just so people can see. Um, it says Pendleton LTD. And it, it doesn't have the, uh, the kind of typical, you know, the blue and gold like you normally see. Um, but it is really good. It's really heavy, really good quality. Um, so again, 265 on that. Uh, never sold this one before or anything like it. Uh, so I have I don't have a clue how long it's going to take to sell. Um, and again, I'm going to sell it for 265, best offer with 14 shipping. So the next item I found, which for me is super rare, and I was really really excited to find this. Um, and some of you may know this right off the bat. Gorgeous. The Robert Graham. Um, and it's got the on the inlay kind of of the inside of the uh, I don't even know what you call that the button inlay I guess um, and then the sleeves as well. It's got really cool designs. Um, and again, we're gonna go back. Uh, those, is that a is that a flip up collar? Um, flip up. <clears throat> yeah, this would be I guess I guess technically it would be called a French cuff. Um, yeah, it's for um, cuffs, right? Well, actually, mean, this one wouldn't be a French cuff because it has a button for the buttonhole. Okay, so it could be flip-up cuffs. Yeah, it could be flip-up cuffs, but you can see it's got a I button. Uh, yeah. um, and then again, I think, you know, I'm going to see how how well this works in the first video of doing the screen share. Because um, it really gives people, you know, like, 
not definitive evidence, but I mean you can see what I'm looking at, what I'm pricing it on. So I bought this one for uh, six bucks as well. It was twelve dollars, fifty percent off. Um, this one sold April fourteenth, so a month and three days ago for a hundred and four. That's, really cool that's a sick design. Yeah, the sleeves on mine are a little bit different, um, but they're still pretty wild in terms of design wise. So that's the main reason I bought it. Um, I mean, I say that. I guess because it's Robert Graham, I really grabbed it. Um, the key features on this, though, are that it has the flip-up colors and the really unique design here. Um, and the one I have is also a 2XL, which is, you know, the bigger the better. We talk about that all the time. That's going to sell incredibly quick. Um, the, and if you guys out there ever find Robert Graham or anything remote, like, that looks like has a weird-looking design underneath the, the, the cuffs or has a... We're embroidery underneath uh, the back of the collar, and it's it's like in cursive, and it, you can kind of make it out. Um, definitely grab it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anything Robert Graham is going to sell. Um, yeah. This is the next thing I found was actually right behind it was a green Robert Graham. This is the exact design that I have. Uh, sold for 51, 15 bids. I paid six dollars for it. Um, it's a medium. But this is a medium as well, so you're looking between these two shirts, 150 bucks. I paid $12. Um, for me, that's pretty good. That's not super typical, um, but obviously I'm happy with that. Um, the next shirt that I found is this Patagonia, and I'll have to show you because I don't think they have very good pictures. Oh, they do. So it's it's a Patagonia uh, flannel. Well, it's not flannel. I guess more of a plaid shirt. It's not really a flannel material. It's kind of a thin cotton, but it's got the New Belgium. Um, which is a beer company, uh, embroidered on it, or patch sewn on it. And I had never seen this before, so I guess it's some type of uh, company tour or something they did like that. Um, and it sold for, I think this one was listed for 69 and the guy took a best offer of $45. Um, so that's, you know, seems like a pretty, pretty easy sale. Patagonia always sells well, and anytime you can combine two big names like that, it's usually a good bet. Uh, and the last thing I'll show you here is... Uh, uh, hold on a second. I want to do a quick screen share. Of okay. The, um, I just let people know that Patagonia is like a huge, like a highly collectible um, company. And they do sell these. Let me just pop it open real quick. Uh, screen share. I don't know. I think you might have to get off this, your screen share maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. There we go. There we go. I bought this for $5.00. <clears throat> and um, it's a Patagonia Cinchilla, and uh, I, at first I thought it was a woman's because, I mean, it, it's a peach, kind of like a pink color. Right. So someone actually privately messaged me from, on eBay and said that they worked for the company for, like, years, and they made this around the early 80s, and it's actually a men's, and come to find out the measurements, you know, came out to be a men's uh, XL. And I sold this for 60 bucks in... I think I listed it for maybe a couple of weeks, and it had about 17 watches on it. Uh -huh. nice. uh, first, yeah, the first time, and uh, the the buyer didn't pay for it. But and then, not even two days later, after I relisted it, sold. And uh, I mean, these things are. If you find the Patagonia Cinchilla uh, snap uh, T snap fleeces, grab them. Yeah, the Cinchilla sell. I mean, regardless of what what size or what color they are, they sell. But again, just about anything that you find. Um, in terms of high-end brands or even low-end brands, the crazier the design is, I mean, the the more unique items sell the quickest, you know. And there's some some of the Cinchilla, Patagonia Cinchilla fleeces that look like uh, kind of have a Native American uh, yeah. or Southwestern motif. Man, that stuff sells for two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars all day long. Yeah, I mean, don't ask me why. It just it's they're really collectible. Yeah, I mean, it's vintage and it's still very functional, still very fashionable. And they're well made, man. You if you feel those. They're super soft. They, that's I think that's the reason why I call them cinchilla, um, yeah. for the softness and its fabric. Yep, I agree. Um, so last thing I have here is uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pronounce this. Maybe I won't butcher it too bad. My like Raken does. <laughs> um, it's a uh, Ermenegildo Zinga or Zegna. Most people just call it Zegna, but it's super simple design. It's just basically a check or a window pane um, design, paid. Three ninety nine for it at Goodwill. I mean, it's it's a uh, large, excellent condition. It actually had the uh, I don't know what I did with it, but it had the dry cleaner tag on it, so knew it had just been washed. Um, looks like it's been really well taken care of, 
and any of those Zegna shirts are going to sell. Um, the couple that I've had have literally lasted about a week and a half, um, and two of them, to me, weren't even very good-looking shirts. Uh, they didn't compare to this one at all, so I probably would give this a week max before it sells. Um, I'm going to list it for 85 or best offer with $4 shipping. Um, both on the Robert Robert Graham shirts, I'm going to do free shipping on those, um, and then the Patagonia shirt, I'm going to do four dollars shipping on it. So that's another thing too is when you're looking at uh, the different shipping options, um, you know some of the shirts are going to be really light, and you can ship them first class if they're really light and small. Like a lot of the Tommy Bahamas and um, Ray and Spooner like Hawaiian shirts that are made out of silk. That'll fit in a little. Well, I have these right here. Um, It'll fit in a small pouch, and you can just stuff it in here. You know, this is like a six by nine, uh, and pay two dollars and eighty cents to ship it first class. Um, so anyway, that's I use, um, I use the uh, these. I'm I'm blowing a brain fart right now with with the uh, I forget the name of them are, but you can get a bunch of them on eBay for super cheap, and they're really. Mail? Yeah, yeah, exactly, and they're really lightweight, and uh, they come in all sorts of sizes. And you can, I mean, you can, I can even throw a jacket in one of the ones that are like, I think I have one that's about 20 inches long. I can throw a nice, nice size jacket in it and send it out. But I always, I mean, I always wrap it up nicely before I send it off. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I always do. If it's 13 ounces or under, I always do the free shipping. And um, on some higher, mid to higher items, I'll throw the uh, the free shipping in also. If I can throw them into a um, padded flat, uh, flat rate envelope or a you know legal size flat rate envelope, mm -hmm. I mean don't ever, don't feel free uh, don't don't shy away sometimes from from doing the free shipping because I mean it will boost your your rankings in, uh, in on eBay. Yeah, for sure. So that's my five items. Um, you can uh, go ahead with yours. After okay. the ad or what is that? What? Yeah, after you your Pepsi ad. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Um, the first thing I'm going to show, because there's a couple of the things I want to show, like um, a couple of the brands that I have, and I might do it a little differently. But my first brand is, uh, I mean, I live in Florida, and I do a lot of fishing, and I see these Columbia. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Columbia PFGs. Yeah, and the PFG stands for professional fishing gear. Yeah, I mean, if you can find the ones that are nylon and polyester, they actually go more than the cotton. And we had a new Goodwill open up about two and a half weeks ago. And um, I went over there, and I think I spent like $350 on a bunch of stuff. Mm. And uh, so there was there was like four of them. Actually, no, sorry, five of these in a row. Uh, three cotton and two polyester. This one has a couple stains on. I've held off a little bit, a little mm. bit though. To, um, because I didn't want to, I mean, I'm trying to get those stains out. It just doesn't look like they're going to come out. So, I mean, I mean, they're not bad. It's more like someone brushed up against something. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to probably try to get, like, maybe 17 bucks for it. But on the four that I've sold, uh, they only lasted, I mean, I think one, two of them sold within two hours. And I sold those for 26 and 29 Man, that's quick that's, money right there, dude. Yeah, but those are the cotton ones. Those ones go for a little less, and with the and these are huge sizes. These are they're all two X's, so it was from, must have been from the same person that had them mm -hmm. and donated them. Um, and I, I I have an Omni shade that was a polyester. I sold that uh, for full asking price of thirty five dollars. That was about took about five days, but the other ones, I mean, I sold them real quickly, so I I probably made about. I want to say like $140 on like a $12 investment, and that's not even including um, this Columbia one that I still have left. It's the last one I have left. Um, but if you find even the short sleeve ones, the Omni shades, the polyester, even the cottons, they'll go for an easy. The short sleeve, I would say like the short sleeve is about 20 to 25, depending on the fabric. If the fabric's like polyester or nylon, they'll go up to like 30. And the long sleeves, I mean, you can get like 25 plus all day long. Nice, and that that one has the little flaps in the back too, right? Yeah, it's it's actually no, this one doesn't have the vent. Uh, no, yes, it does. It has the vent. And I think that's I, characteristic too. It's something that that you can look for, um, as the people watching. The, if you're looking for or looking at Columbia, 
Um, usually it'll have PFG under the thing, but also the vents in the back are just, you know, there are some shirts that are not PFG that have those vents, and that's really uh, easy to sell to you. Yeah, uh, I mean, because I fish, and I mean, I'll be out there, and it's in Florida, and I'm on a pier, and uh, I'll be out there in about 90 degree weather with the humidity just ridiculous, and I you, I put these on all the time, and yeah, I feel so much better, um, yeah. but definitely look for Columbia. Um, the next one is a little a little different Pendleton than what uh, Josh had. This is a Pendleton board shirt, and how you can tell it's a, a board shirt is it has the flap two flaps in the front, and this is one's a little even rarer because it has the loop collar at the top. Nice. These, were, these board shirts were made famous back in like the 50s because the surfers used to um, swim with them, like surf with them. And it would it would be like before they had like uh, wetsuits for surfers. Uh, this is what they would use, hmm. and um, and this is a shirt actually. These shirts were really made popular when the Beach Boys came out. Um, and uh, but anyways, uh, I wanted to show that. I'm pretty sure it's it might be from this from the early uh, from the 60s to the early 70s label. Yeah, I'd really like to find a place. Um to be able to really identify those labels. Cause yeah, I mean, I go, to, I go to Vintage Fashion Guild, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, this is how I know that the labels around this early 70s, uh, I mean, uh, late 60s or early 70s, okay. because they, they take the pictures of the labels, from whether it's Gucci, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I've seen some of that stuff, but like the, the Ralph Lauren, it just says, like, this is between yeah. 80 and 98, and I'm like, well, okay. Yeah, they don't give you, like, specific labels on it, but, I mean, I love going to... I, for all my vintage items and their higher end items, I always go to Vintage Fashion Guild. Like I'll show you my um, right now. I'll show you my Gucci. I have these uh, listed right now. Um, the ones I have up for one hundred eighty dollars. Uh, I'll take the shoot things up. The ones these are the ones I have up for one hundred eighty, and these are about thirty dollars less than my other pair because it's missing one of the labels, but it does have the. Gucci logo right there. Nice, dude. And it's, these are the horse bit. Yeah. Well, and these That's... are vintage. These are, I mean, these are, I'd say, like, early 80s, mm -hmm. maybe late 70s. Um, when I bought these, I'll show you the other pair. The other pair is in really good condition. Um, is, is in a lot better condition. When I got these, they were in, like, really bad shape. I mean, the leather was just, like, it wasn't good at all. And um, I bought, I talked to the guy down. He wanted, like, $20 for the pair. And I'm like, you know, man, I mean, all I have is, like, 10 bucks on me. So he's like, all right, I'll give you 10 bucks for the pair. And then I went to a shoe repair shop. Um, if you ever have, like, dress shoe stuff like that, or even sometimes, like, if you have purses that are, like, the leather's broken or something's broken on it, a lot of the time the shoe repair places will offer, you know, they'll help you out with your um, purses um, and my shoes. Uh, and I went in there and I asked him, you know, I, I've, I've never done this before. And he, how, how, what can I do to make these you know, being a hundred dollar plus pair of shoes. And he mm -hmm. told me he's gonna have. He had to respray them and uh, shine them, and he had to actually spray them twice because uh, the color was bad. It was wasn't looking good at all. But I mean, the soles are pretty, yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, for such a vintage shoe, it looks really good. I really yeah. wish you had a, a photo of the before and after, man. That'd be. Great. I know, man. I, I didn't know, dude. I, it would have been sick if you saw it from before to now. Yeah, uh, I bet it was a big transition, transformation. I don't know if you can see that. It says G Gucci. I believe these are from the 70s. It's the vintage label. I mean, these are authentic. You can just tell when you feel a, a good pair of dress shoes. Um, you could you could tell it from a good pair to a bad pair. Yeah. And these ones I have up uh, for 209. And um, and I have three watches on this, and I have the ones for 180. I've actually turned down. Five offers, and most of them range from eighty to one hundred and ten. Because yeah. I, want, I mean, I want at least one sixty for these, and I'm in both of them. I mean, total in both pairs, I'm into them for fifty, so like twenty five, uh, twenty five a pair. So yeah. I mean, and if I if I make you know a couple hundred bucks from that's that's really good profit for me. Um, am I am I coming in clear? Do what? Am I coming in clear? Yeah, your camera's a little fuzzy though. Yeah, I might have. I think last time when you just like got close to the camera and backed up for some reason it kind of refocused. Or something. I didn't know. 
Whatever you did last time, they fixed it pretty well. Yeah, I gotta open up the software real quick. I'm sorry about that. My I got a new camera and. Well, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and show my one unique item that yes. you have over. Yes. Uh, I actually kind of have two. I wanna I wanted to show you guys uh, an idea that I was trying, but it actually didn't work out. But maybe it'll save you from doing the same thing. Um, but this is a, a Panhandle Slim, uh, and they've they've made different. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it says Brooks and Dunn by Panhandle Slim. Um, they've done a bunch of different shirts with different people, kind of collaborated. Uh, but this shirt is really unique in terms of the bull horns on the back, um, and then just the colors in general. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's like a kind of a rainbow of colors here. Um, and that shirt, I think Kevin, you said that shirt would probably sell for about sixty bucks or so. Yeah, it should. I mean, it has a Brooks and Dunn label. Uh, yeah, I haven't, really, I haven't looked it up. I did find one that sold, I think, for fifty-two or something, but um, it was from a long time ago. So I'm not coming in now. Yeah, that's good. It's a lot more clear now. Okay. Um, I just had to do that. Sorry about that. Yeah, now it just uh, went back out of focus. <laughs> back out of focus. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Something doing my webcam. Um, I feel like you need to get up and do a dance and make it. Up oh, there it went. There we go. Um, anyways, because I'm doing a manual focus right now, so I'm just like, oh. forget. I don't need to auto focus it. Um, but yeah, I have Pan Panhandle Slim. Uh, the first time I came in contact with them, I bought a I bought a bunch of pearl snap shirts, and this one has like the um, little line that comes through. It's like a rodeo shirt. Uh -huh. I sold that for fifty five bucks, and it was for a woman's. So yeah. I. Panhandle Slim has really, you can make really good profits off them. You know, I, I have yeah. a couple right now that are kind of playing, but I'll still like make 25 off it. And yeah. uh, I mean, if you find any cowboy shirts with like the pearl snaps, and uh, I mean, a lot of, I want to say like 85% of them sell for 20, 20 bucks plus. I mean, yeah. if you a good brand like Rock Mount, uh, uh, Ranch Wear, or, um, or Panhandle Slim, or H Bar C, grab them. I mean, those are, you get a premium for those brands. For sure. I don't yeah. want this video to be too long. What's your What's your next item? My, my next item is these Nikes. Oh, yeah. Those are the yeah. tweed ones, right? Yeah, these are like tweed. Um, the only other one I can find out there is, I'll do a, let me look it up real quick. Um, the only ones I could find out there were these ones, and they're the same exact one. These ones right here, do you see that yet? Yeah, I can see it. Same exact ones. And they went for 105 bucks. Uh, and these were as an auction. So, I mean, these are well made. I think mine are in a little bit better condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me back. Got to get used to this. Yeah, no, it takes a minute. Yeah, I mean, these things are... Yeah, those are sweet, man. Yeah. What year are those? Do you know what year they are? Um, it says on the inside, it says 2010, and it has the Nike Swoosh 6.0. So I mean, I think they're they're skate shoes, but still, I mean, every anything Nike, if you get like a rare item, they're gonna they're highly profitable. Um, I'm, I think I'm gonna list those probably about 100, 125, uh, or best offer. Yeah, that's a good profit. How much did you pay for them? Over a hundred. What did you pay for them? I think it was eight dollars at Goodwill. The same one where I found all those Columbias. It wasn't the same day though. Um, right. My next one's a pretty good label. I've actually, I actually have a buyer that actually follows my um, whenever I list these shirts, the Slim Fit Hugo oh. Boss. And I mean, I'll message him. Tell him I, I'm sure I'm gonna message him and tell him I got another one in. And this one actually is a better design than the ones other ones I've sold before. And I've sold those for like 20, 25 bucks. And this one's made in Italy, so I want to get at least minimum, you know, 30, 35 bucks. It's a um, large slim fit. Like, it's a really cool looking yeah, design. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it, it's. Um, anyways, yeah, it's made in Italy. Um, so if you find Hugo Boss, really slacks, you know anything, I grab the Hugo Boss. It's a good, it's a really good brand. Yeah. What did you pay for that one? Um, three sixty nine. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
even the material is a little bit. It's it's cotton, but it feels like a little silky. Yeah. Not, but I mean, it's made in Italy, so. Nice. Yeah, that sounds high quality. I don't just sell men's clothes. I also sell a lot of women's clothes, and actually, I have really good luck selling women's clothes. Nice. And one of the brands to look for, and again, this is the same Goodwill. It was the same day I found uh, Columbia's. Mm -hmm. Lily Pulitzer. Oh yeah, that's a really. Yeah, good idea. This is. Uh, she just passed away, uh -huh. and ever since she passed away, like she's highly sought after. A lot of people love uh, Lily Pulitzer, whether it's the you know this is a tutti frutti print. Yeah, I like that print. That's cool, man. That dress. Um, I mean, it's it's in good shape. There's one. I mean, I gotta really look at it. There's one tiny, small little dot inside one of these, like one of the small little uh, sewn on holes. Yeah. And uh, but I'm gonna. I'm trying my best to get rid of it, and if it doesn't go, I'm, I mean, I'm going to take it to my dry cleaner and have to see what she can do. If mm -hmm. it doesn't go, then, I mean, I'll still try to get 35 bucks for it, uh, but if it does clean up the way I want it to clean up, I'm going to probably try to get up to uh, upwards of, I would say, 45 to 60 bucks. 60 right. bucks I'll, I'll um, set the price at, and I'll take a best off of anything over $45. Yeah, what um, were you selling for on eBay? Didn't you see one for 50 or 60 or something? Yes, I have one right here. Well, wasn't it was it an auction or buy now? I think yeah. here it is. Let me um, pull it up for you. There you are. You see that, right? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, yeah, this is the same exact one I have. Um, there's is a size ten. I think this is a yeah. This is a six. It's a little smaller. This one was a bid too, so it was a, and this was fifty bucks March fifth, so it's kind of close. Mm -hmm. um, this one actually, this one has a stain on it. Okay, this one's a lot worse than my stain. Nice, yeah. So you should be able to get more for it then. Yeah, I have a my stain's like I want to say like, oh here it is. I got it. I'll show you the stain right now. Okay. Tiny little stain, right? Do you see that? Man, you barely can. Yeah, right in the white spot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's barely there, but it's it's there. It's it's a good maybe centimeter. Yeah. And that I'll take I'll take a I have a picture of that already up. I haven't listed it, but I'll definitely take a picture of that and write in the listing. You know, um, it has a small size. It could be a coffee stain or something. Um, yeah, that's kind of what it looked like to me, but who knows? It could yeah. be chocolate too. But if you if you do ever find stuff that has stains in it, don't shy away from it because if it's a good enough brand and the stain isn't so bad or it's on a place that's not noticeable, and you can still sell it. I've sold um, a Hugo uh, another Hugo Boss actually that had a small stain in the in the cuff, uh -huh. and it was barely noticeable. And I I still got what I wanted for it, and I even told the guy about it. Yeah, it's always best to disclose that stuff, obviously. But yeah, some people buy it anyway. Yeah, I always tell my customers that. Some people, you know, have faith in themselves being able to get it out, or if it's in a really unnoticeable place. Yeah, same thing with if you're missing buttons, mm -hmm. um, like on the on the sleeve or something. Some people, I'll sell I'll sell the stuff still with if it's missing buttons because I know a lot of these people will go to their tailor and they'll have them there and they'll pay the five or four or five bucks to put a button on and sew it. Right. Um, and I mean, so anyways, this next one. If you ever are into sport coats, and let me back up. Is that two button or three button? It's a two button front, and it has a herringbone, small herringbone, but I mean it's gorgeous. It's like a black, silver, and gray with um, the red stripe, uh, red uh, lines coming down. Yeah, you can see it just barely. Yeah, it's really cool, and it's half lined. And if you ever see these labels right here. Harris Tweed. Harris Tweed, yeah. I've had so much good luck finding lately. I've sold, I think, I mean, I bought in, I found the last two months six different ones. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've, I don't know what's going, actually, I, saw, I found three in one Goodwill. Jeez, and, and it uh, pretty well? This was, uh, yeah, this is this is one right here that I found at that, good, that same Goodwill. Nice. And it's a sa It's for Saks Fifth. Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's got two so, Yeah, and it has the, 
sewn in chest pocket nice. and sewn in flat pockets. Now there's flat there's pockets in here. And so I mean this is this must be newer because they they left the pocket sewn shut. But yeah, it I wonder, I wonder how many people do that on a on a normal basis cuz all the jackets I've ever had I always have the pockets cut open. Yeah, I find a lot of them like that. Uh, I mean, they're basically whenever somebody feels like, you know, whoever buys it or whoever owns it cuts open the pockets, you have a full um, flat pocket. Right. Uh, true pocket and um, I mean they're in there. You can feel them good inside the the uh, lining inside here. You can feel them. They're there. How much did you pay for that one? I paid eleven dollars. I paid eleven dollars, but the same exact one I found. Uh, it went for a hundred and ten dollars. Dang, that's good. Uh, they do take a while to sell, like any sport coat stuff like that, jackets, uh. um, blazers. They take a while to sell, but I mean you make you can make ridiculous profits off of it. Um, and actually, uh, one of our uh, buddies in our group, uh, Rakin Pro uh, Steve Rakin, he has a book coming out called Blazing Profits. Uh, I believe yeah. it comes out just before July. Uh, definitely check that out. I know. I'm really curious definitely. to look into that because, I mean, the thing is, like when you look at selling stuff that's not clothing, um, uh, for example, that the Orvis. So I bought this Orvis gun case, and it was like a soft fleece line gun case. Um, bought it about three, four days ago, and I listed it yesterday, and it lasted about seven hours. Um, I had two offers on it, then the guy bought it, and I only had seven views total, so it like went really quick. So I guess my point uh, behind that is that there are things outside of clothing that sell really quick and really well, like collectible stuff, um, a lot of vintage toys, and just different things. But clothing is is Definitely slow to sell, but it's consistent. So things like um, the sport coats, you know, you're not going to put a whole lot of money into it. Try to go on a half half off day, 50% off day, um, and buy you know a, a sports coat or a whole suit or something for you know 10 or 15 bucks and lift it. And then it's going to take two or three, maybe even four months to sell. But when it does, you know, like the Harris tweed, you paid 11 dollars, you're going to sell it for 120. That's a that's really good profit. And it's going to come yeah. at one of those days when you're just like pissed off because nothing's selling or you can't find anything in Goodwill, your phone's going to go cha-ching, and it's going to be that sports coat, you know? I mean, um, about a month ago, I, I sold one, and I, it took me forever to try to list it because I'm like, man, it, it has three moss holes in it, and um, they're tiny, tiny hole, holes, but they're, they, they're noticeable if you put it up to the light because mm -hmm. it's high lined. And uh, so I took pictures of it, and uh, I think within two days I sold it. I don't know if it was a keyword I look I used or what, but I sold it. It was uh, Harris Tweed. It wasn't a famous brand. It was uh, Svedberg, uh -huh. uh, Alaska, and um, I sold it for sixty five bucks. And it had three moth holes in it. And Dang. it took a week to sell. And the guy left me positive feedback. And because you know, I was honest about it, I took pictures of it. I yeah. wrote it in um, the description stuff like that. And and so um, people do appreciate you telling the truth about stuff. So. Anyway, yeah. this is um, this is I sold this um before. This is a Burberry. You sold the same jacket before, right? <laughs> yeah, I sold this jacket before, and it it just came it came back on me. Yeah, uh, he's a really nice guy. We were talking back and forth before he bought it because I I had it listed for three hundred dollars. It's a um, vintage Burberry's. Oh yeah. Um. It's like a military style jacket because it has the flap here and the flaps up top. Oh, and it's, nice. camel, it's camel hair lining so that it, you can take the collar neck out, you can take the middle of this, uh, you can take the uh, liner out. And um, when you take the liner out, it has this really cool. Oh, yeah, the whole back is the Novacek, you said. Yeah, the blue uh, Burberry Novacek. And even if you, if you use the cuffs, you can flip them up. I mean, this thing is like all sorts of like features in it. You flip yeah. it up, and it has a number chuck there. And then if you want to pop your, pop the collar, oh, it nice. has a number chuck there. I That's mean, good. this thing is hold that hold that collar up again. One thing I wanted to point out about to people about Burberry is whether it's a whether it's a purse or a jacket or a shirt or whatever, you can see how the how that thing is. It's incredibly symmetrical. The the little red line at the end of each collar is in the same spot. Um, anytime you see Burberry that's not sewn very symmetrical like that, it's most likely fake because almost everything they have. Nice. I mean, you can tell this thing is this baby is well made. It's mm -hmm. a gorgeous jacket, and I mean, I was in a store, the thrift shop where I bought it. 
they had like really high priced items. They had an FSU uh, starter jacket. They wanted forty dollars for it. And I even asked Lady, I'm like, is this a real price? Or I mean, she's like, oh no, that's what we're we're looking for to get it. And I'm <laughs> like, okay. I mean, we have a lot of people that are you know that went to you you uh, FSU and stuff like that, uh, Gators, all that stuff around here. Um, yeah, and I walked around. I kind of was like beat myself up. I had my you know my two little kids with me. And uh, I'm like, I turned the corner, and I, something caught my eye, and it was this jacket. Through the, out of the corner of my eye, I saw this. The color. Yeah. I looked it over, and I said to the lady, I go, it's twelve dollars. I mean, I mean, if it's not real, can I bring back and, and return it? And she's like, well, at this thrift shop, we don't take returns. She actually goes, I would, I should be pricing this at thirty. I'm like, all right, forget, it, I'll buy. It. I ran, I basically ran out of the store with it, man. And, and uh, yeah, I've had it listed for a couple months, and it sold. Um, and the guy just his arms were too long for it. Yeah. Uh, he was really nice, really nice guy. Um, yeah. He he kept it, but I mean, it's super light. When you start to when you take the liner out, yeah, it's like really light. It's like a um spring or, or fall like light, light fall jacket. Nice. But, so is that your is that your last one there? Yeah, that's my last one. I'm I'm good for now. Um, I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing these haul videos more often. And um, I mean, if you guys have any any questions, please leave comments in the comment section. And uh, I mean, if you have any suggestions for us, if you if you're looking whether it's like shipping or you know do, if you do international shipping or pre shipping or whatever, um, whether it's that or or any suggestions or comments, please uh, because we we would love to hear from you guys. Yeah, and also if anybody has any ideas about that, um, the Pendleton. Uh, tag on that coat that I posted earlier. If you've seen it before or have any information about it, um, feel free to comment on that or send us a, a message. Um, also, one thing we wanted to mention is that we have another guy, um, Joshua Schwartz, is going to be uh, in the Hangout with us on, on a usual basis, normal basis. Yeah, and he's one of the admins on the um, Thrift and Lounge group. Yeah. Uh, Thrift and Lounge Facebook group. Right. What we wanted to do was to have... Um, a fourth person kind of rotating. So if any of you have like a, not, a lot of knowledge around any particular category or niche or anything like that and you want to come on the Hangout and and like kind of disclose the information or, um, you know, take questions from people or whatever, um, feel free to shoot us a message on Facebook. Uh, it's called the, the Facebook group is called The Thrifting Lounge. And we'll have a link at the bottom of the um, YouTube video and we'll also have links to like uh, whether it's our eBay store and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the last thing I wanted to do is, um, on all these shirts that we sh that we showed today, um, I will go back and add annotations later uh, when they sell. So you can come back and view this video, you know, if you want. And uh, and we're gonna be talking about how much we paid for it, how much we want to sell it for, and then there'll be a little box that pops up that says actually how much it sold for. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I think uh, that's about it. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching and. Like I said, if you guys like what we're doing or are interested in what we're doing, we're just trying to help people out, figure out, you know, I mean, if you're at a rough spot in your life, uh, time right now and or whatever it is, we're here to, we're trying to, you know, start a business and whatever it is. Uh, we're, I mean, we're always moderate, moderating the, the group also. Um, right. And just subscribe to us. Thank you. Yeah, cool. See you guys.